Today, let's discuss a new report that we have on mutual funds, the good, the bad, and the fine print. Uh, we're happy to provide this report to anybody that requests it by contacting us at the office or going to our website and requesting the report. And if you have any money at all invested in mutual funds, I really recommend that you pick the report up. It's an easy read. It's definitely not war and peace. We, we kept it as simple as we possibly could, but it's going to give you a lot of great information. To start out, it's going to explain really what a mutual fund is. You know, some, some people don't even really understand what a mutual fund is. But a mutual fund is just simply a collection of stocks and or bonds. And the reason why they were created was because years ago, we had just individual stocks to pick from. And a lot of individual investors or beginning investors didn't know which stocks to go out and buy. So mutual funds were created where they said, okay, we'll just... Uh, give us your money. We'll, we'll hire professional money managers to pick and choose the different stocks and bonds that we think are going to be good, and therefore we'll make it easy for you. you. You won't have to watch the stock market every single day. Well, if you fast forward to today, there's now about $10 billion, uh, with a B, $10 billion spent per year on advertising uh, by the mutual fund industry. And today we actually have more mutual funds than individual stocks to pick from. So it hasn't necessarily helped out that much, but uh, you have a lot of different fund companies that are out there now competing for your dollars, and that's why they're spending so much on advertising. They want to get your assets under management with them so they can collect their fees and expenses. Uh, a couple things that our report talks about that a lot of individuals are not aware of, and that is the fact that some companies will have both what's referred to as quotas that they put on their financial advisors, as well as shelf space payments that they receive from mutual fund companies. So what I'm talking about here is a lot of times individuals will have some different mutual funds. Maybe it's all in one fund family, or maybe it's spread out amongst two or three or four or five different fund families, and they really don't have any idea as to why they own the particular mutual funds that they have. Well, if you work with an advisor at a, you know, one of the big firms possibly around town, uh, they may have in the past had some quotas. Uh, meaning that either their supervisors or management, managers or their firm required them to sell so much of a particular fund family uh, and put it into each of their clients' accounts or portfolios, really whether or not that was the best fund or best fund family for those particular clients. The, the, the advisors literally are required or have to, if they want to remain employed with those firms in order to, to stay there, they have to sell so much of these funds sometimes on a weekly, certainly on a monthly basis. Uh, one of the reasons why the firms will impose quotas on these advisors is because some firms will receive what's called shelf space payments. Now, what this is, uh, think about going to the grocery store. A lot of people know this already, but, but not everybody. The uh, items that are basically at eye level, the brands that you see as you walk down an, an aisle, the items that are, are, that are at eye level, those firms have actually paid a fee to be there. Uh, the firms that are kind of at the bottom or up at the top where you can't reach them, they maybe haven't paid any shelf space fee or they, they haven't paid as much maybe as the name uh, brands that are right there at eye level. So when you have a financial firm that's receiving these types of payments, uh, it will create an atmosphere or an environment where those advisors that are working with their clients are then therefore forced or required to sell so much of those funds to their clients. And that's a uh, a little bit of information. We go into more detail in the report on that, but it's a real big issue that we see in the industry. And of course, at our firm, Strategic Wealth Designers, we've never received any type of shelf space, shelf space fees, nor do any of our advisors have any quotas. Uh, the report goes on to talk about what fees and expenses to ask about or to look out for if you have money invested in a mutual fund. When you add all the different fees and expenses together, it's not uncommon to see individuals paying somewhere between maybe one and 3% per year on their mutual funds on average. Uh, obviously, depending on how much money you have invested in mutual funds, over time that's going to add up to be tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars over, say, a 10 or 20 or a 30 year period. So you want to make sure that the fees that you're paying are, are reasonable and you want to make sure that you're not paying any unreasonable fees. And again, the report goes into a little bit of information on that. And then the last item I always like to point out uh, about mutual funds is really when they're appropriate, when they're not appropriate. And, and what we mean by that is mutual funds definitely have a time and a place. A great time to use mutual funds, if you want to use mutual funds, is in what's referred to as an actively funded account, which means it's any account that you're putting money into on a monthly basis. So maybe your employer plan, whether it's a 401k or a 403b, or if you have some sort of outside investment, 
that uh, yourself or your spouse you're contributing money to on a monthly basis, those are considered active accounts because what happens there as the stock market gets volatile, you don't get excited when the market's volatile. You don't necessarily like it, but you're actually taking advantage of that volatility because you're still putting money into that uh, plan on a monthly basis. So when the stock market goes down, you're still buying more shares at a lower price that helps you recover more quickly when the market goes up. So in an actively funded account, mutual funds can be okay. Where you definitely want to avoid using mutual funds is in what's referred to as a dormant account. Now a dormant account is any account that you are not adding money to on a monthly basis. So it could be a previous employer's retirement plan that you never rolled over, or maybe you did roll it over, but you're no longer putting any additional contributions into it. Those accounts are considered dormant, and that's where you want to avoid mutual funds because in a dormant account, you're not taking advantage of the volatility of the market. When the stock market goes down in value, you just lose money. You have to then sit around and wait and hope for it to go back up in value, and that's an environment that you want to avoid using mutual funds in. So if you have mutual funds or you have additional questions about mutual funds, feel free to contact us and request the report. Uh, mutual funds, the good, the bad, and the fine print, we'd be happy to send you a copy.